Hi, I'm Satoshi, and in this video, we are going to switch from running Bitcoin Core to Bitcoin Knots on the command line. But if you're starting from scratch and still need to get your node up and running, please check out the step-by-step -step tutorial playlist by Ministry of Nodes first. Keaton will help you get to this point. But if you have a node already set up and you run it headless, this is the tutorial for you. We'll also look at some of my favorite node commands and how to verify PGP keys. And this will be done on a Raspberry Pi 5 running the native OS, but the process will look the same on any Ubuntu or Debian-based Linux distributions. So once you're connected to your node over SSH, but before we make any changes, let's check a couple of things. First, what version of Bitcoin is running with Bitcoin D dash dash version. We can see here that Bitcoin Core version 29.0 is running. To make sure the node is up to date, we can check out Bitcoin dash CLI get blockchain info. And we can see here that the blocks are matching the headers. The verification process is really close to one, so that's good. We're not in the initial blockchain download and we're not running a pruned node. Now let's look at the disk space usage using the command df -h. And this will show all the file systems of the Raspberry Pi in a human readable format. And there's two areas I want to point out here. The first is this, which is the local micro SD card, which hosts the Raspberry Pi's operating system, as well as the system wide binaries. And this is where the swapping out of Bitcoin implementations is going to happen. And we're not going to touch this area down here, which is a two terabyte SSD hard drive. And this is where all the blockchain data is stored. So now let's go take a look inside this hard drive. We are going to change directories and run MNT slash SSD. Then we want to list this out using LS. And there are some folders here hosting data for Bitcoin and electors. All right, let's go into this Bitcoin folder and list it out. I wanna actually list it out a little longer. I like to see it like this. And you can see here the blocks, the chain state, your debug logs, um, all the data. All this information we will not touch and it's very important as we all know it takes about a million years to do the initial blockchain download on a Raspberry Pi. Now let's go back to our home directory and let's take a look at those binaries I was talking about. Those are going to be found in our micro SD under user local bin. And we'll list those out. These are the programs that give all the instructions. They read your configuration settings. It tells your node how to communicate over the network. And these programs also manage all that data on the hard drive. Bitcoin Knots is built from Bitcoin Core and is largely the same software. So we can swap them out very easily. So now that we understand what the binaries are, we can poke around a little. And if we ask to see the Bitcoin daemon dash help, I actually like to look at it a little less. It makes scrolling easier. We can see here the full list of settings this version of Core has to offer. Each setting will come with a short description, the default value, and the exact way you'd write it in if you wanted to change it, either on the command line or in your bitcoin.conf file. So you can see here, connection options, wallet options, 0MQ, and all the way near the bottom, you're gonna see the node relay options. And these are the mempool policy settings. So after you took some time checking this out, it's time to get started. Press Q for quit 
And first thing we have to do is gracefully stop Bitcoin Core. And we do that by Bitcoin dash CLI stop. Now let's head to the official Bitcoin Knots website and get the correct version for our node. There are quite a few Linux versions, so we can check which one is right for our operating system by running this command, u name dash m. And we can see here the Arch64 is the correct version. So let's right click, copy that link. Now change into your downloads folder. And we're gonna run wget and paste that link. And we're going to do the same for both the fingerprint file and the signature file. So let's take a look at what we've just downloaded. We have the actual software release file, Bitcoin Knots 28.1. It's been compressed and once we verify it, we will unzip it and install it. Then we have the SHA-256 sums file and the release files have been hashed and they create this SHA sums file. If anything has changed in the release file, this hash will not check out. And then we have the .asc file, which is the signature file, and it proves that the known developer signed off on those hashes. So what we are going to do is a verification process called PGP. It is tedious and it can feel unnecessarily convoluted at times, um, but this is truly where don't trust verify comes from. We wanna make absolutely sure that the Bitcoin Knot software we want to run has not been tampered with and was signed by the right people. Let's verify the signature file first. So we're gonna run gpg dash dash verify and then the shawsums.asc to see who signed this. You'll see a list of PGP keys along with emails. And while Luke Dash Jr. is the sole maintainer of Bitcoin Knots, this list shows independent developers who have verified his work. They rebuilt the software from the public source code and got an exact match with his release, confirming it wasn't tampered with and truly came from that open source code. But we still need to verify that these developers are who they say they are. So I'm going to grab this first email here and do a little bit of research on this Gugger guy or girl. There is a website called keys.openpgp.org, which is a PGP key directory. Let's put in Gugger's email. And when we do this, then a fingerprint shows up. And let's compare it to what we have in our .asc file. And I can see here they match. So that gives me confidence that this email and key go together. Not every email is listed in here, but this is one good step to ensure that Gugger is a trusted developer. And then on the Bitcoin Knots website, there is a little bit of information and clues as to how to go about this process. In my opinion, it could be a lot more detailed, but I'm sure that will come as Bitcoin Knots grows. There is a link here to a signature repository and when we follow it, we can see it takes us to the official GitHub of Bitcoin Knots. We can see a list of signatures here. Chris Guida, Gaguro, Leo Hoff, and NSVRM. These are all the signatures in the .asc file that we can see. So if we click on Gaguro, it'll take us to the full, really long public key. What we want to do is go to the raw file right click and copy it and then w get it to download it after we download it we see gagro.gpg here now we can import it running gpg dash dash import and then put in gagro.gpg and now let's try to verify again running that same verification command and we can see here it says good signature from oliver gugger 
And we do see a warning here as well. This key is not certified with a trusted signature. And that just means I haven't personally marked this key as trusted on my system yet. Like if I were building my own directory of trusted keys. So for now, the verified signature is what matters. Now let's do the same process on the other emails we see here so we can verify as many developers as possible. Then we can run the verification command again and see for every email we put in, we see a good signature. Great. And the last step of verification is to check that the SHA sums hash file matches the release. And we run this command. The ignore missing is just to ignore all the other releases. We only want to verify the Arch 64 that we have downloaded. And we see that it's okay. So great. The developers have signed the hashes and the hash matches the release. Let's unzip the file. Run this unzip command and paste in the zipped file. List it out and you will see Bitcoin knots. So let's go into that Bitcoin knots folder, list it out, and you'll see the bin, which are the binaries. Now change into the binaries folder, list it out, and all we have to do is copy over these binaries to our user local bin. So let's run sudo cp star for all and then user local bin. So let's check the version of Bitcoin we're running now. Bitcoin D dash dash version. Amazing. We did it. Bitcoin knots 28.1 is running. That's one more node making the switch to more user controls. Now we need to start it by running Bitcoin D dash daemon. This will keep it running in the background. And we'll head back into our Bitcoin D help file. And let's go all the way down to the node relay options and see how many more settings there are here. And if we wanted to take one, say like reject tokens and turn it from its default off to on, we could copy it and paste it into our bitcoin.com file and change it from zero to one. Last step, I like to run bitcoin-cli, get blockchain info and just take a look. So we see here the blocks are almost matching the headers. Everything else is looking good. So success. If you want to leave a question, comment, or if I got something wrong, let me know. Leave a like if you want. And as always, my friends, stay sovereign.